In this video, you're going to witness one of Central Asia's most rarely seen food. Big reveal. Oh, oh, it's still hot. It's steaming. This is sumalak. This dish is only prepared once a year for the Uzbek Navruz holiday. And this year, they're making a lot. Well over a thousand pounds. How are you doing over there on that side? I feel like the wind's only yeah, coming towards me. So. I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> Once you see how it's made, you'll understand why it's not so common. What they're doing right now seems easy, except for it's freezing outside. The making, from beginning to end, takes over 24 hours. People here, tough as actual nails. But this painfully long and difficult process... This is the final product. <gasps> all starts with one simple task. Well, good morning, everybody. It is 5 a.m. here in Uzbekistan. We are in the city of Namangan, and we are up very early for a special reason, is to come here and see this. But the cruise, perhaps you could tell me what I'm looking at. What you're looking at is the wheat sprout. Mm. This wheat is not milled for flour. Instead, we're after the natural sweet juice inside. To get the sprouts ready for this moment, they've been watered four times a day for the last three days, right here in their home. How much has this pile grown since it started? The tiger will It grew 100%. If you would invest early IPO, you would get 100% ROI, bro. So you missed it. Roy, <laughs> you call it Roy, I like that. Simple wheat sprouts are the main ingredient for sumalak, but there's nothing simple about the food making process we're about to witness. A lot of the sumalak is going to be made today over a ton. Is this enough? This is decentralized way of doing it. You have to expect 30 more of the different how to do this. After collecting the wheat sprouts, they must be brought to a grinder to help release the juices inside. We've come to our next location. This is the grinding place with the grinding lady. Hi, how are you doing? Just to kill a man so what I'm curious about is that this is a dessert, but you don't add any sugar to it later on. No. That means all the sweetness has to be coming from this. Yes. So I'm dying to try out the actual rough, raw ingredients right now. So at first it tastes like something that would go on a salad, next to the croutons and the diced tomatoes. Yeah. And then there's like a little bit of a sweetness to it, almost a little vanilla too. So we are here at the final site where all the cooking and all the fun is going to happen. I really admire the commitment of the people here because it is just a few degrees above freezing. And some people are just wearing like slippers. I'm freezing my ass off. I don't know how they do it. Right here, the wheat sprouts have been ground. They've been soaking in water for about half an hour and they put it through this net. This mesh cloth is going to allow all the liquid to filter through and then they kind of give it a squeeze. This is what we want right here. This liquid, uh oh, confusion, confusion. They don't have a place for the refuse. Ah, uh, solution. Everyone's getting ready. Everyone is pitching in in different ways. Some people are bringing these big hazans or setting them up, getting them ready, putting the mud around them to seal them. Some people are starting fires, cleaning. So it's a huge group community effort. And by tomorrow morning, we're going to see a, over a ton of this stuff be made and given out for free to the public. So that is the big moment we're building up to. Before the hazan even heats up, the ingredients are added. First, cottonseed oil is spread around the pan. Then, they add rocks. That's right. River rocks are crucial to the process, and you'll find out why soon. Now, we're ready for that precious wheat sprout juice, filtered and drained into the kazan. As the contents of the pan continue to blend, we're now ready for the last ingredient. Right here, wheat flour. So they have wheat flour, they pour that into, and then they kind of whisk it about, mix it in, and get all the clumps out of there. So this is gonna get a lot more full, and when it is, they're gonna finally start the fire and get this to boiling a bit. This is Miss Inobot and her family, helping her to mix in the wheat flour, though everyone has a slight twist to their strategy. As I said, it is not just the women that we came with today. There are 10 different kazans and so many people from the community pitching in to make this event happen. Some people have a stick, some people have a whisk, and this lady has an electrical mixer. It's plugged into an extension cord. Does this go all the way to your house? We're in a park. What is this even plugged into? It's brilliant. I love it. So this is how you work smart, not hard. Very nice. Oh, I was going to give her a fist bump, but she's actually holding the electrical in the other hand. At this point, there are no more ingredients to add. We're just going to need a little bit of heat. As the fire begins to roar, 
More attention and care is required at each vessel, ensuring this liquid keeps moving and doesn't burn, potentially wasting hours of effort. Remember those rocks? As they shift around, they help create even more motion so the liquid doesn't stick. But Cruz, yes, it's wild to see the progress that has happened in just a couple hours. I would be standing here. There's a reason I'm not. There's a fire blazing under the Khazan. <laughs> I, I was fine. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, oh, but she's, <laughs> she's like, please go out of the fire and also do some work. But Cruz, you should help me too, right? So what is the technique here? So what you do is that you have to make sure that it's not going to stick under the bottom. Yeah. So you always have to scrap the bottom. No, it's okay. It's okay. My favorite part is this lady does not trust me at all. I'm like, no, I insist. I'll do it. She's like, no, you won't. Because this is mine. She will not let me destroy this under her watch. This is Bober Park. Tomorrow is Navruz, the most important holiday in Uzbekistan, celebrating the start of the harvest season. Every March 21st, folks celebrate with festivities and sumalak, a painstaking sweet made just once a year on this day. Just in a short amount of time, after putting in the flour, after putting in all that wheat juice, it's become really thick. Are people doing this overnight? Till 8 p.m., they're gonna keep doing that, and then they're gonna close it for another 12 hours. How many more can you do before you need to hand it to me? <laughs> okay, only two people. They're gonna stay for another 10 hours. Oh my gosh, the commitment here is unreal. This is you going to the extreme physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. What is pushing you right now to keep moving forward? So the main driving force for her is a charity. She's happy that a lot of people are going to enjoy it and a lot of people are going to like it. I wish I could help, but she said absolutely not. Yeah. I'm going to come back in five hours. I'm going to bring you a Gatorade. I'm going to bring you a masseuse, some salt tablets too, and a banana. <laughs> yeah, and in exchange, you will get a sumalak. You got a deal. Yeah. Right now we are in a nearby market because there is a lot of cooking to be done over at the park where they're making the sumalak. So we picked up some samsa. Now I know what you're thinking. Uh, you guys have had samsa uh, twice and at one place you had uh, five different kinds. Oh yes. These are small. Yeah. So it's different. This guy is a mobile vendor behind us. It looks like his oven probably weighs a ton. Yeah. So inside, he's built a fire. He has a couple different types of samsa, including this. These here are the baby bite-sized version, made with a flaky pastry dough and stuffed with juicy mutton. They come in fours, and you can tear it down to one. And look how cute that is. Huh? Very nice. Mm, salty, fatty, cuminy, tons of onion, juicy mutton, and a beautiful doughy wrapper, golden brown on the top. That is the mini samsa. The food tour continues behind us, something we actually have not tried yet. These are kebabs. Is this you, Bagruz? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you see me? I feel like David Blaine coming on stage right now. You can find kebabs everywhere in Uzbekistan. Minced lamb, beef, or chicken, spiced, wrapped around a skewer, and roasted over charcoal until they're dripping with deliciousness. Not only is he cooking, he's like organizing them according to where it's hottest, where it's coolest, rotating them. Can you order two? Now he's gonna hand it like out of nowhere. You see like kebab <laughs> levitating toward to us. <laughs> oh, there it is. Two kebabs, fresh on the steak. Can you just eat it like this? Yeah. All right. Mmm, beautifully seasoned, minced right off of the grill. Got a little crispy on the outside, but it's just nothing but juicy deliciousness on the inside. This is one of my favorite things so far. It's so simple, but so delicious. It's classic, it's something most people know, but not to be overlooked or underappreciated. Ow. We have found yet another very unique food, something I've not seen in any market so far. So this isn't the typical heavy, hot, oily food, no. This is something completely different. Although I gotta say, actually, it is fried. Yeah. But it's not meat, it's seafood, essentially. It comes from carp, freshwater fish here. We saw in the last episode how much people in this area love the freshwater fish. How much beer has this fish been drinking? <laughs> Look at that belly. But here, they're utilizing the egg sack. So they chop it into pieces, wrap it in batter, fry it, and then you get this. I think it's unique, bro. I haven't seen it in other markets. It looks like hush puppies. What's that fishy? It smells like oil. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because the eggs inside now have a bready texture to them. But you can feel the individual eggs like popping in your mouth, right? Yeah. It tastes like a bread. It doesn't taste like a fish, except the aftertaste. Yeah. <laughs> 
back in the park, the Sumalak sisters continue on. They've come too far to turn back now. I promised you a Gatorade. Have you been here this whole time mixing? Oh my gosh, the only minor problem is that I don't think your country has Gatorade, so I brought you a Fanta. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, she gave it to someone else. All right, I thought it was a nice gift, but yeah, she's got to focus, she's got to work. Up to this point, we're only about halfway through the sumalak making process. After 10 hours of continuous stirring, the sumalak transforms in color and consistency. We saw you this morning at your home. It's been a long day. How you doing? Yeah. No, she's saying I'm fine. People here, tough as actual nails. The color of this, it's completely transformed. It's thick, it's bubbling, it's dark brown. It looks like caramel or chocolatey. She has her paddle here. She's so gonna give us a little bit. This is like Molotov cocktail. It's very hot and sticky. So yeah. you gotta be careful. Yeah. Let's try it out. Wow, this is an incredible, strange, and very unique flavor. It reminds me of Odang in Korea. Yeah. Why does it remind me of like a fishy soup fishy, in Korea? Yeah. At this point, it's not incredibly sweet. It's a little bit like savory. So she says that the sweetness is like a 50% because it's got to stay another 12 hours without fire in that time. So it's going to become really, really sweet. The hardest part is now finished. From here, the men remove the fires. And the women create lids from fabric so the mixture can breathe without steaming up inside. The ladies end their day with a prayer. They hope for the best before returning back in the morning and discovering the final result. It is the next day. There is excitement in the air. There's music, there's festivities. It's a very fun event. It is now Ruz. All the Sumalak is ready. We're just waiting for the officials to come here and start the event officially. But in the meantime, they gave me a little bit of a peek of what's underneath. This is the final product. <gasps> Would you take a look at this? All the work and effort and labor that went into making this, it's ready and soon it's going to be scooped and dished out to hundreds, if not thousands. Alas, the vessel's covers are removed, revealing the final product. This rich, dark brown, viscous dish is ready, and so is the public. It's a good day. The women proudly serve the masses, dishing out the hard-earned fruits of their labor to all who ask, each person holding their own container. Some have small cups, some have huge jars, so they can take a portion home to share with their families. Dude, this is wild. Total chaos, man. It's very festive. Everyone's here. Everyone's excited. They're about to open this one up. Big reveal. There we go. Oh, Whoa. it's still hot. It's steaming. It looks incredible. It looks like a dark mocha. The look has completely transformed since yesterday morning in the last 24 hours. Oh, what does that smell like to you? It smells like sumelak -like for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have our drink right here. We're going to try it right now. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Ah. We waited 24 hours for this moment. It is hard to describe. The texture is almost like a thick gravy. You're downing that, dude. Let's get another. It has a little bit of a, like molasses, caramel type flavor. There's a little bit of earthiness to it because I think coming from the wheat. For me, it's like memory of the youth because as far as I can remember myself, every year Sumalak is going on and me, small kid, rushing with my own container. So it brings a lot of good childhood memories. And it's a very rare instance when you have it. So for right. me, it's really good. Right, so as much about the taste as it is the nostalgia and the feelings that go with it. Yeah, right. right. I feel like I'm also drinking your childhood. That's it, we did it. Guys, this whole video, over 24 hours, waking up at 4 a.m., all of it was just for this moment right here. Some things uh, you just gotta wait for. It. It's not just about the food, it's about all this right here. Before we go, I wanna say thank you so much. Rahman, these ladies have been so hard at work. It is so impressive to see their commitment to this festival and everything they've done here. Cheers. Sumala is much more than a holiday food. Oh yeah. It's a taste of nostalgia, a symbol that represents selflessness and giving. Soon enough, this 24-hour masterpiece is devoured within 24 minutes. What remains is warm bellies, happy faces, 
and a sense of accomplishment. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. So from here... Mm -hmm. They can put it into so, a grinder? Yeah, that's sorry, I I'm thought sorry. you were saying something. Over the last few hours, the color here has completely changed. Before it was kind of white because we had the corn... Uh, wait, not corn. Wheat. Hold on. Wheat, 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 water. I found out all the sum, 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 Yes. There's one chicken one there. One guy ordered chicken. The only guy in Uzbekistan who doesn't like lamb. This is a lonely country. If you don't like mutton, you're kind of effed, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. All right. Good. Oh, good. It's oh, I like, she's like, hey. Don't give too much. <laughs> That's enough. All right. Guys, that brings us to the end of our Uzbekistan adventure journey and my men. The crew, you crushed it, you did a great job. If you've watched any videos about Uzbekistan, you have seen this guy's face because he is an expert when it comes to traveling here in Uzbekistan. Gain the advantage of Big Cruise's travel expertise and guidance by using funstands.com to plan your Central Asian travel adventure. Go to funstands.com with my man, Big Cruise. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. A peace. All right. Plov. I need more plov in my life. Plov is my new staple of my diet.